this is John Cullen with OKRaw.com to do another exciting episode for you. And this episode is a long-awaited episode. I know a lot of you guys have asked me, is uh, John, what do you feed your dog? All right, so this is a long, complicated topic. But before I say anything, I have different, different things I feed him depending on the day, depending on the time of day. I probably have three primary things. Probably like, number one, he eats how I eat. Uh, number two, he basically will have his uh, pre-made dog food with extra supplementation added. And number three, he has some different kinds of treats that I like to feed him every once in a while. So the first thing, and I'll go into more detail about each of the items in a second, is that he eats what I eat. So if I'm cutting open something like the jackfruit here, he loves jackfruit. Jackfruit is probably his favorite fruit. He also eats other fruits and vegetables. He loves mango a lot. He knows when I'm cutting open avocado, he'll come running to the kitchen and wait for the scraps. And more importantly, he eats my dinners every day. I don't try to feed him a lot of fruit necessarily, but I'll feed him some until he has what he wants. But what I do like to feed him is lots of vegetables. So this is actually my vegetable soup that I made based around um, tomatoes and carrots and peppers juiced along with greens, many some of which you see in my garden behind me, like these longevity spinach greens, and uh, also the uh, seaweed. So Hoagley Man, I literally have my dog eating out of my palm of my hand. Yep, yep, come here. Yep, yep, all right, look at this. He loves the food so much that I feed him. Anyway, so that's primarily, you know, so most of the time I feed them what I'm eating because much like many people will feed their dogs, you know, whatever they're eating, McDonald's, you know, tacos, chips, you know, cookies, candies, all these things. He does not get any junk food. I'm highly against feeding dogs junk food. And look at that. Cleaned it all up off my hand and he even wants more. He's going to be a good boy because he knows my daddy still has got more food and I want it. <laughs> so... Anyways, aside from what I eat and what he eats, let's get more into making some of the food that I usually make for him, as well as talk more about my personal opinions about feeding dogs and what the best food to feed dogs. All right, so now I wanna share with you guys actually my thoughts on what should be fed to dogs. Now, please note, I'm not a vet. vet. <laughs> I've not went to school or studied in any extensive way how to feed dogs you know I see the common advertising that is out there I've read a lot about you know dogs and other canine uh, mammals and these are just my opinions on the topic you know so please feed your dog however you see fit <laughs> number one you know, I may not agree with you if you feed your dog certain things, but that's just my, that's my problem, not yours. That being said, the whole reason why I've thought longly and deeply about this is because I care for my little Hoakley man, or Oakley man, <laughs> the miniature pincher, who uh, seems to be fit in shape and have basically has tons of energy when he needs to, although he does sleep a lot like most dogs do. All right, so that's the... Uh, that's a disclaimer. Now the next thing is, I will tell you guys that I am a plant-based eater. I do not consider myself vegan. I'm not a big fan of labels. You know, while I do believe that animals should not be harmed for food if it's not required for somebody's diet, you know, I'm also under the belief that, and I don't eat animals myself, okay, let's make that clear. You know, I also encourage everybody to do what they feel is right. You know, I know from living on 25 years on a plant-based, basically, pretty much strictly, uh, maybe meat once in that time and a few times, uh, a bunch of times had some dairy, although I do not, no longer eat dairy. I do not believe it to be a health food for humans. And I have extensively studied, you know, how people should eat and, and have reviewed many laboratory studies where other mammals, such as rodents, mice and rats have actually eaten some of the foods that I choose to eat myself because they it has shown health benefits in other mammals and all mammals are a little bit different so just because it happens in rats doesn't mean it's good for humans or doesn't mean it's good for dogs but I can maybe make some inferences and form some beliefs that being said I'm not a fan of feeding dogs a hundred percent carnivorous or only meat diet I do not 
think that is proper easing. I know the raw animal food diet people may be pissed or whatever at me. And you know, that's your right to have different opinions. In this episode, I'm sharing my personal opinions on the topic of what I'm feeding my dog. I'm not going to say it's best or worst. I guess I will see with how my dog grows and lives and is deficient or non-deficient or excels or has a longer life, all right? Now, here's some conjecture is that I have seen dogs that are 100% plant-based from that are owned by vegans um, and they feed them like vegan processed kibble. <laughs> and I'm sorry, if you guys are doing that, hey, that's great for other animals so that your dog does not have to live so that other animals have to die. And I totally get that and I respect that. But I do not respect that you're feeding your dog highly processed foods that are not completely natural. Now, if you want to do that as a human being, you know, as a human, you have the choice to eat highly processed, in my opinion, junk foods like Oreos, Twi Triscuits, potato chips, McDonald's, Coke. But I, I think it's kind of on some level animal abuse if the animals are not getting what they need. I've seen other vegan dogs that are just living on the farm and just eating whatever they could forage, including dropped avocados on the ground, dropped coconuts, and, you know, getting table scraps from their vegan owners, which I think would be quite healthy. But I also realize that there are, there are potential nutrients in meats that animals should probably be eating. And so, you know, that's why I'm, I don't feed my dog 100% vegan. Although, if you guys want to do that, that is totally up to you. I'm never going to tell you guys what to do. But please pay attention to your dog's nutritional needs and requirements. And, and if you are going to feed him entirely plant-based, figure out how to ensure that he gets all the nutrients he needs. Because after all... We're feeding our animals, you know, a diet that may conform with our ethical beliefs, you know, but more importantly, I want you guys to take their health into consideration. And one of the big factors that play into how I choose to feed my diet, my dog's diet, <laughs> feed my dog, is I look at the, the canine, the canine animal. So what are dogs related to? Well, they're basically domesticated wolves. Long story short, I'm not a paleontologist and do all these studies and stuff but basically dogs are basically domesticated wolves and you know wolves are also related to things like foxes and there's many other different kind of um, you know creatures in the canine oh there's a cool bird uh, in the cool canine family and I guess the one that clo is closest related to a, a, a dog of modern day is a dingo and this is from the land down under a dingo is like a, a wild dog wolf kind of creature and if what do dingoes that are kind of similar to dogs but different because they're wild, what do they eat? Well, they eat what they could kill. You know, they could kill little rabbits and little insects and bugs and they'll scavenge for fruits and vegetables and even go in the trash of humans. And so that's what I believe the modern dog is. He's a domesticated wolf, which may eat, you know, lots of meat or only meat. Um, but I see my dog, actually my dog, Earlier today was snacking on this plant. I don't know if you guys can see this. Water spinach, actually, the one over there. I was sitting right here eating my lunch, and he was eating some of the leaves or chewing on the leaves. I'm sure you've seen your dog chew on grass. So for this reason alone, I don't believe the dog should only eat meat. That being said, I'm not a big fan of eating them eating only vegetables either because in the wild, you know, as the dingoes would show or many other canines in the canine family or, or dogs, other close relatives, including things like raccoons, you know, they are basically omnivorous, omnivorous, you know, or maybe I wouldn't say omnivorous, that's kind of stretching it. I would actually say they're, they're scavenging carnivores. So that means they, they basically scavenge whatever they could find, whatever they could eat. And of course, they'd be eat meat because most of their digestive system is adapted to eat meat, although the dogs can also eat plants. There are studies that I've seen that if a uh, you know, dog eats more vegetables in their diet and not exclusively meat, they're going to have lower incidences of like uh, urinary tract infections, right? And so that would lead me to believe that, hey, high maybe uric acid and other things in meat is probably not good for dogs, so they want to have more of a varied diet. Instead of you forcing them to just only give them raw animal food, which is probably one of the best things for your dog, you know, I also encourage you guys to feed, you know, selected plant foods that can confer health benefits to your dogs. I mean, many of these have been studied like blueberries. Wild blueberries are one of the best foods you could feed a dog. And if you look at most, you know, dog foods that are 
aware, they'll have things like blueberries and sweet potatoes in there. You know, maybe like ground up pumpkin, you know, squashes, right? Flax seeds, you know, maybe even fish oil. And so, you know, that's what I try to duplicate with my dog. You know, so number one, he eats a nutrient dense diet, right? So I try to provide him many different antioxidants, phytochemicals, trace minerals, and micronutrients that are deficient in processed dog foods like kibble. I do not encourage you guys to support kibble um, and dog foods. It's kibble. It's a highly processed food, much like humans eating processed foods. We should eat natural foods. You know, I mean, my garden, you know, today for dinner, I had some of these longevity spinach greens. I had some of this moringa here. Actually, I had some of the, the uh, water spinach right here as well. And so did Oakley because you saw him eat some of what I was eating earlier. And so my goal is to feed him what I'm eating because number one, it's just more convenient. Number two, he seems to like it. And number three, I know it's some of the healthiest food that could be eaten because it has a lots of different phytochemicals and phytonutrients, trace minerals, and antioxidants. And here's the thing, right? They've done studies in dogs that the dogs eat antioxidant-rich foods and the antioxidants um, in the, the dog's blood increase. So that means that if a dog's eating antioxidant-rich plant foods and it's in their blood, then that means to me that they are getting some benefit from them, right? Every creature has basically metabolizes food and, and different things, and there's many different things going on, and so free radicals are created, and so I'm trying to like squelch the aging process in my dog and provide him the healthiest life ever. And I believe it's the an antioxidant-rich diet is a big part of that, of course, also ensuring he gets all the protein he needs and all the essential proteins. So aside from feeding uh, him what I eat, in addition, he gets his regular um, dog food uh, that I buy that I've actually supercharged with superfood powders and other uh, plant foods that you guys will see me make a batch in a minute. In addition, he gets the standard diet of uh, beans and rice, sometimes with other items like uh, cauliflower or whatever else I happen to cook up. So I will cook him up special and I'll vacuum seal it, you'll see it in a little bit when I uh, you know, feed him that. And so, you know, that is my primary goal. That being said, you know, I, the, the, I, bu I buy a pre-made dog food, and if you guys do choose to buy a dog food, you know, I'd encourage you guys to get a freeze-dried or dehydrated dog food. They're definitely on, you know, with using human-grade foods, number one. I'm not a big fan of just standard dog food or dog kibble. It's a highly processed food, once again. Do not recommend or encourage you guys do that if you really care for the health of your dog. Although on some level, the hard kibble, chewing on something hard can be quite healthy or beneficial. On rare instances, actually, I get my uh, Oakley uh, like bones to chew on, you know, because that's what he would naturally do. Now, the other reason why I feed him in this way specifically, and I know he's not a true carnivore, because, you know, for me, this, is, this sounds kind of messed up. But for me, like if Oakley wanted to eat meat, I would, ha I, would, I would buy him a live rat and he could chase it down and kill it and then eat it. And if I think if I did that, he would not eat the rat. Now, why do I say this? Because, you know, in my very backyard here, there's a cat, mama cat, that had kittens in one of my composters, right? The cat had four kittens, right? And they're all running around in my backyard. I thought they were the cutest things. And I was like, I hope Oakley doesn't hurt them. And at first, Oakley wasn't hurting them. And that was good. But then I put a fence up so that the cats couldn't get out into the major backyard and they could stay in their area. But then they snuck through the fence. And then I was just concerned that Oakley would just get them. Unfortunately, what happened was Oakley saw them. He wanted to play with them. He caught them just like a stuffed animal toy. He took them in his mouth and... And he killed three of them. And let me tell you guys. That was one of the hardest days of my life when I had to pick up poor little baby cute kittens that were no longer alive and dispose of them. And, you know, I mean, I was saddened by the fact that my little miniature pincher killed these baby kittens that did not even start their life. That was completely difficult for me to handle. I broke down. I cried. It was not fun. And then all I knew is that I need to save that last kitten who didn't come out of the little, you know, alleyway that I had the blocked off. You know, he didn't escape and we raised him properly. And now my video editor who lives in Chicago has the cat 
and he's leading a good life now. He even goes out on walks, from what I hear. <laughs> I haven't seen him for a little bit. Uh, but, it, but yeah, he's still alive. And then, the sad thing is, like, I would think that at least if Oakley's going to kill him, you should eat him, right? And I think that for humans, too. Not that I believe we need to eat animals, but I believe that if you want to eat animals, you should raise them as your pets, kill them, harvest them, process them, and eat them. That sounds kind of mean and extreme, but if we look at nature, this is how nature works, right? There's no, I mean, if it's a carnivorous animal, a carnivorous animals aren't vegan. They have, you know, they do what they're going to do. They're going to, a bear is going to kill you to eat you, man. <laughs> you know, especially if you're running, because the animals like to chase things that are running. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a difficult way to do it. And that, the other thing I think is that, as a human being, if we had to raise animals and then kill them to eat them, I personally don't believe that most people would be able to do that. Like, I, I couldn't kill a chicken to eat them, right? Now, could your dog or cat kill an animal to eat it, right? Actually, a bird, uh, one of the alley cats that live in my backyard, feral cats, whatever you want to call them, killed a bird. And, I, I mean, he made, the feathers were everywhere, so I had to clean them up. I didn't appreciate that too much, Mr. Cat. And then the, the body didn't even look like it was eaten. It just looked like it was like a, a, cat, a, a toy to catch and to kill. And that useless slaughter of animals, I think, is like not right personally. Because I had to dispose of a dead bird body like I had to dispose of the dead cat bodies, kitten bodies. And my dog, Oakley, didn't even eat them. So like if he ate the cat bodies, then now tell me, okay, he's a carnivore. He wants to do that. But he'd actually, you know, I think he'd much rather eat the food that I provide them. I think the cat that killed the bird did it for sport because it's in the cat's body, body and the DNA. And I know some cats may eat birds and other creatures and rats. But I think most cats that are being fed kibble kind of like have learned like, hey, the kibble is my food and the bird's just for fun. And that's kind of messed up because, I mean, that's kind of perverted on some levels. Um, and it shouldn't be like that, right? So I know this video is getting long, but I'm just sharing my thoughts on this process. And that's why my dog eats meat products in very small amounts. I try to feed them majority plant-based with some meats. So, you know, the second level is his food, which I'll show you guys in a minute. Some of which is actually uh, commercial human grade dehydrated dog food and or freeze dried sometimes when I buy that. And then the third thing I feed him are the treats and I feed him actually uh, lamb liver um, that's clean, like, uh, you know, pasture raised from grass fed, um, from New Zealand. And then I feed him some sardines that are just basically caught sardines with no salt. Uh, he loves those guys. So, you know, I want to make sure he gets some of the different nutrients he needs, like that maybe in organ meats. Also the essential fats in the sardines, although he is also getting the flax seeds. So, you know, that's pretty much my thoughts on animal diets. Do so whatever you choose with your dog. And I would encourage you guys, if you guys are feeding vegan kibble, please, you know, feed your dog real food and please ensure you get the right. They make actually vegan supplements, um, you know, that actually have the nutrients you need that you could add to, you know, maybe cooked beans and rice and some other foods so that to, to ensure your dog's going to be healthy. So I'd rather encourage you guys to do that than, you know, just feed them a vegan kibble that's highly processed. The other thing is for people that are on raw animal food diets or barf diets, raw food diets for dogs, you know, I think that's great. But I think also that, you know, while animal, animal meats can be good, I think by adding in some raw plant foods, you know, as well could be quite beneficial. And I would encourage you guys to do that. So meat, all you guys that are either vegan or raw animal food, hey, let's meet in the middle somewhere and determine for your dog, you know, how much percentage of meat to plants or plants to meat you want. I'm like highly weighted, maybe like 80%. I don't want to say any numbers, maybe 75 to 80%. I don't know, it depends on the day, man. It's like plants for my dog with the small animals, but you may be on a lot of animals with the little plants. Nonetheless, I think you got to find the right balance for your specific dog. And the other thing is do not make any dietary changes overnight or too quickly because your dog will react violently. He does not have the right microbiome. He, he will not be able to digest some of the food and you're going to think he's like, he's, he doesn't like it because he's not eating it. So I would encourage you guys, whatever you do, like I recommend for humans trying to change their diet, 
introduce the food slowly. So you know, if you've been feeding your kibble to your dog the whole his whole life, you know, give him 80% kibble or 90% kibble and 10% of the new food you're trying to transition him to. Keep that up for a week, and then maybe go to 20% the new food. 80% and slowly wean him off the old food so he gets used to the new food and sometimes he doesn't like eating food So like, you know, sometimes I make salads that I like but my dog doesn't like so then what's my trick? My trick is to basically add in enough meat so that he smells the meat with the vegetables and then he'll eat it So you could you know mix in some tuna or some sardines or sometimes I'll just put the liver treats or put some bonito fish flakes in with the food that he wouldn't eat because he smells he doesn't like what I made but if I don't have meat to it, he'll then eat it. And I think that's also a really good technique that you might be able to use as well. Anyways, let's go over to my table and show you guys actually what I normally feed my dog plus the, the supplement food that I feed him and how I do it. All right, now I'm gonna show you guys actually how my dog eats. I wanna give you guys a disclaimer. This is how I choose to feed my dog. I'm not saying you guys should feed your dog anything like this. Um, do what you guys believe is right. And I know some of the vegans out there are gonna be mad because I'm not feeding my dog vegan. And you know, I respect your opinions to be vegan for you and your family and your animals, um, but please also respect mine. And for the raw animal food eaters, I can't believe you're feeding your dog vegetables, man. It's unnatural. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry I don't meet your requirements either. I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm, I definitely feed my dog more plant-based because I saw personally firsthand that he would not eat a fresh killed cat meat. So that means I'm not gonna feed him in any large way animals that he would not kill to eat himself because he is more of a scavenger and dogs these days because they're domesticated are scavenger creatures and they can digest plant foods plenty well i mean if you look at most dog foods that are kibble based and crap it's mostly like grains which i do not believe in a grain based <laughs> dog foods at all I'm, I'm, I'm actually highly against that. They should be eating vegetables and fruits because that's what they would find in nature. They wouldn't be able to necessarily process grains, although I believe some grains in small amounts can be helpful for additional fiber or roughage. With that disclaimer, let's get into what I feed my dog. So basically I make a big batch like this and it gets vacuum sealed in a half gallon mason jar. And this is a mixture of basically lima beans and it always varies depending on what I have. I have some uh, sugar snap peas that are in here that were too mature for me to eat. They were dried up and I could have saved them for seed, but instead I cooked them up for my dog with the brown rice. And that's the main mixture. He'll get a scoop of this, and then he'll also get a scoop of the mixture I'll be making, right? And I'm, I'm out, so I'm gonna be mixing it today in a big seven gallon bucket here for you guys. I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I'm gonna put into it. So basically it's based around uh, the Honest Kitchen, um, this is chicken recipe, grain-free chicken recipe that he's going to get along with a whole bunch of superfoods and other foods that I'll be combining and making the powder. So, you know, I like to think that it's like, uh, you know, this one has a primary ingredient is meat, but then it has also plant foods. So now I'm basically increasing the amount of plant foods in this. This also has all the different nutrients a dog requires so that he could be healthy and including all his trace minerals. But also the superfoods I'm adding will also add even probably more trace minerals and more antioxidants than the dog would get otherwise. That being said, right, I'm not a big fan of high antioxidant diet for dogs like all the time because they could have an antioxidant overload <laughs> as well. And I was like, when I learned about that, I'm like, whoa, we don't want to feed the dog too many antioxidants, but you want to feed him enough. So I'll leave that for you to decide. Now, because this is going to be a dry mix, and then we got it with uh, this wet mix, it's kind of wet, but it still needs to be hydrated more. You sh they always encourage you guys to add like water to this if you're just feeding like this grain-free chicken recipe, because it's mostly, uh, you know, vegetables. Like in this, there's a half a small pumpkin, two and a half bananas, six decord apples, two and a half bunches of celery, eight potatoes, um, 16 pounds of chicken in here, six and a half sweet potatoes, 15 handfuls of green beans all in here. So I kind of like, I like this, this product, although it is actually quite spendy. This product, I guess the retail is like $85, but I got it on clearance. So it's like uh, getting close to the expiration date there. And then to hydrate that, instead of using water, and you could use low D water, and I'm not really gonna get into what that is, and that's the water I would use. But instead I usually use a juice, or I use like blended tomatoes. If I have extra tomatoes, I'll blend tomatoes up into like a liquid in my blender 
and then I'll pour that in for his liquid. I might use sometimes extra carrot juice that I made that day for me to drink or some other kind of vegetable juice, including celery juice. If I'm completely lazy, then I'll, I always have something like this on hand. This is organic, imagine, vegetarian, no chicken broth, low sodium. I also have used, you know, just the, the, the standard chicken broth for my dog or even the seafood broth in some cases to add liquid, but also more importantly to add some flavors that he will like so that actually he will eat some of these more plain, you know, vegetables and fruits and uh, even the beans, you know. So, I mean, sometimes I feed him this alone and he just, because I've been out of my mixture, he likes to eat this straight, like he loves it. He loves jackfruit so much. He loves some of the fruits that I feed him. Cauliflower, oh my God, he loves cauliflower. That's like the strangest thing, like a dog loves cauliflower, like probably loves it more than me. Um, so yeah, that's the basis of what I feed him. And then, uh, you know, I, I feed him these two things also. So these are sardines. This is uh, basically sardines and spring water, no salt, very important. I do not encourage you guys to feed your dogs, uh, you know, things that are excessively salty. So I get this no salt sardines. This is at Trader Joe's, they're only $1.50. So some days he won't eat what I'm usually fe feeding him, including what I eat, including his, you know, uh, beans and rice with his dog food. He'll just get the sardines for dinner and those are the days he really goes crazy. And then his breath also smells like fish, which I'm not a big fan of. And then in addition, I got this. I got some uh, original uh, freeze-dried treats. You know, they make many different types, but I figured the lamb liver was the, the, the best. And you know, there are some vets out there that really talk about some of the different nutrients in liver for animals. And you know, the dogs would eat the liver out first or whatever like that and all this and you know. So I'm just gonna say also the liver also contains a lot of toxins. I know that for humans like we're eating, you know, crappy food or pesticide laden foods and stuff, the liver is also gonna collect some of that. So then your dog's gonna eat that in concentrated form, but it also gonna get some of the concentrated nutrients in the liver as well. So he does not get these all that often. This is a nice treat for him. Um, and it's a lamb, grass-fed lamb uh, from New Zealand. And it's freeze-dried. So, you know, that's a, basically a raw, I guess, lamb, freeze-dried. And that's what goes uh, inside here. And that's what I feed him sometimes. But uh, as I said, most of the time he gets this, which I'll make up for you right now. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So basically I take a whole big package of this, which I think this is like 10 pounds of his grain-free dog food, which is like a lot of food right here. And so I make big batches and then I'll divvy it out and he'll get a little bit each day. I'll store this back in like a, a sealed bag. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this whole big bag of 10 pounds and I'm dumping it in, I think this is like a six gallon uh, bucket that I'm going to use for mixing. This is a completely clean bucket that I've cleaned and sterilized for his food. So I start with this as a base and then basically what I do is I, I simply use some of the different superfoods that I've purchased for me that may have gotten too old or some of them like the kelp I just buy to feed to him because I know kelp is a really good food for dogs. Some foods like I have some powdered uh, organic tomato powder which is basically just not tomato pomace which is normally the skins and seeds things are disposed of when they're processing tomatoes this is basically just whole tomatoes rich in lycopene that's just a powder that now we're just going to go ahead and add into the 10 pounds and you know what here's the thing like i don't really like weigh things out or mix john how much of that did you use how much of that did you use like you know Here's the thing, like if a dog would like eat tomatoes plain, then I'm no problem in adding a lot more of that ingredient. If a dog wouldn't eat an ingredient in large quantity, then I'm gonna add a small amount and also be aware that the small amounts of these extra plant foods I'm adding in are basically diluted into the 10 pounds of the mostly chicken uh, meat there. So here's some chlorella, Yayama chlorella. This is actually some really high quality chlorella. And you know, it's a little bit older for my taste, so we're just gonna dump that in there, right? Chlorella, it's an algae. Um, also, we got some spirulina right here. I think we got a couple things of spirulina. We got a whole thing of spirulina here. Also more algae. You know, my friend fed her dog, like a hair, one of those hairless dogs, like algae, and it started growing hair. But you know, uh, algae is a common supplement um, in like, you know, supplements for dogs. Uh, here, I think we even have more spirulina because I have a lots of extra spirulina that I wanna get rid of. And so, you know, here's the thing, I'd rather feed my dog spirulina for his protein, because that's where the fish would get their protein from, from spirulina, instead of feeding my dog fish. Why? 
Well, aside from the protein and spirulina and the microalgae like this are very high in protein, they also contain antioxidants, right? And once again, I'm not feeding in this spirulina stuff straight, it's getting mixed down into the mixture there, all right? Next thing we're gonna add for some extra fiber is we got the coconut flour. So we're just gonna go ahead and dump a whole bunch of coconut flour that adds some extra bulk and some mass, gives them some extra fiber and nutrients. We got some uh, raw maca powder. Maca is totally safe for dogs. And before you start creating things out of your excess supplements, please do a search and ensure that whatever you're feeding, you choose to feed your dog is safe for dogs. Some things like onion powder would not be good for dogs. Everything that I'm adding into this recipe, you know, can be like, they have maca powder for dogs, right? So this is like human grade maca powder, right? That I'm adding in. Wheatgrass powder, right? Grass. And dogs, they're like synonymous. <laughs> you know, how many times have you seen a dog basically just, you know, go out to the grass and nibble on it? So we're adding some wheatgrass in here. Wow, my, my big bucket here is getting kind of full here. Uh, in addition, I think besides the wheatgrass, we also have some barley grass powder. We're gonna add the whole container of this in there. Next, we got kelp powder. If there's one thing you add to this product, I would say it should be kelp powder. They, they sell a kelp powder, um, you know, just alone uh, for good dental health to like add a little scoop with the food. And it's, it's just really expensive you buy it that way. But I found this Star West brand is uh, pretty cheap. And we're just like going to add it to a food aside from maybe being good for dental cavities or bad breath for your dog. This is also another algae really rich in minerals and trace minerals for your dog. We're gonna go ahead and add that in there. Uh, next we here, we have some uh, gluten-free quinoa rice and shine, organic. And so like I bought this and I never ended up using it because I don't eat this stuff. But it's extra good fiber, you know, quinoa and rice for my dog that we're gonna go ahead and add in and run through them. Now I wouldn't just go out of my way to buy this, but I have this laying around, so I'm adding it in. I think I got another little package of this here too. Next, we got some organic oat bran. This is kind of a little bit old, so it's older than what I would like to eat. I'll just buy some new stuff for me, and guess what? It's gonna go in there. Oat bran for my dog, uh, you know. Once again, don't wouldn't feed him a whole, all these different grains, but I would feed him a little bit. Next, we got some yellow pea protein powder going in. Protein is very important for dogs. You know, some people wanna focus on protein. And I'm not gonna focus on protein, I wanna focus on ensuring he gets proper amounts of protein and the essential amino acids he needs. More importantly, along with some of the different uh, micronutrients like vitamins and minerals that are not often talked about. So I think we basically almost gone through everything. And last, I have a probiotic. So this is uh, like a coagulins uh, bacteria. And this is commonly found and sold in other brand dog foods. So I'm not going to dump the whole container in here because that would be kind of insane. But we're going to shake a bunch out. And this is a shelf-stable probiotic. Actually, this is the same probiotic they actually add to GT's kombucha that is shelf-stable. And so that's why I'm using this one in my dog food. And this is also one that actually I still take myself on some occasions, all right? So that's pretty much it right there. And then we're going to go ahead... And uh, show you guys this. Like this is one heavy bucket now. It's like almost all the way filled full. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, slap the top on here, and then I'm gonna shake the heck out of it. <laughs> and we're gonna come back at you and show you guys how I'm gonna save this uh, for a little bit until I get to feed it to my little man. All right, so I'm just about done. Now the other thing I normally add to this mixture would be uh, flax, ground flaxseed meal and also some coconut shreds or uh, dried coconut that I dried myself. That's a little bit too old for me to eat but my dog loves it because I was feeding it to him straight. That would also go in here but because I'm making such a large batch I don't want to have those fats that may go rancid um, you know, because that's in a fairly good percentage um, in these containers to be stored so I will add that in after I've individually you know uh, scoop these out into smaller containers probably the majority of this will get stored in like a mylar sealed mylar bag uh, potentially all right 
So uh, this is what we got. This is basically pre-mixed food, and it's definitely going to be like green because of the, all of the spirulina and everything mixed in there. And so what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and use one of those little things as a scoop. And we're going to scoop this out, and then we scoop it. I scoop it into these other reused containers that then I'll basically feed them out of one container, and I'll have all these extra containers, um, you know, to feed them as needed. And then I usually just get like a nice heaping scoop full, uh, you know, um, mixed in with his standard food right here with the liquid uh, to feed him. And that's pretty much how I feed my dog, once again, give him the treats once in a while. And I think uh, it's getting kind of dark, so i got to finish this up, pack some of this. I'm going to pack, you know, what I can't fit in a few of these bigger containers for more immediate use in like a, a, a sealed mylar bag that's going to not allow the oxygen or moisture in that's very important if you guys don't want your batch to go bad so that's pretty much how i feed my dog um, please leave your comments down below please kind of try to keep it kind of nice in the comments i know you may not agree with me and that's all right um, hopefully you do see some value in what i'm sharing if you want to prepare food for your dog like fresh every day from scratch hey i think that's the best thing with animals that you raise and vegetables you grew that'd be the best you know, I feed a lot of these powders that are more convenient for me and easy, but also realize this, he gets mostly what I'm eating that day, which is freshly prepared food, fruits and vegetables, nutrient-dense diet. And if you want to learn how I eat, check for other videos on this channel. Also, be sure to follow me on Instagram. You know, today, actually, I posted a picture of what I'm eating today in, in all the different jars, and sometimes my dog will get some of those very meals and actually I'm kind of getting hungry again so I gotta eat my peaches and my blackberries next all right so that's pretty much it uh, if you like this video hey please give this video a thumbs up also please share with somebody that you may think it can help you know against all else I encourage you guys to no longer feed your dog you know dog kibble that's just from the grocery store that's the bottom of the rung the t most terrible human reject food and it's doing a disservice to your dog I see so many dogs that are just overweight because they're just eating way too much food. My dog only gets fed once a day is the goal. So he's basically on an intermittent fasting, <laughs> uh, you know, by me intentionally. But he'll like chow down and eat so much basically until he's full for that one meal. And then he doesn't eat, you know, until the next day around the same time. Generally, although he gets some treats here and there. So that's pretty much it. Um, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this format and want to learn more about how I eat, because that's what I normally teach on this channel, about the best human diet that you guys could eat, uh, rich in fruits and vegetables, please be sure to click that subscribe button right down below. Also be sure to click the um, you know, uh, bell so you get notified as many videos come out. Also be sure to check my past episodes. The past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 500 episodes at this time on this YouTube channel. Get dedicated to teach you guys all about eating more fresh fruits and vegetables and how to do that the best way possible. Uh, I've been on this diet myself for the last 25 years, and I believe it to be working for me specifically on how I do it, but I'm not going to say it is going to work for you. But I think everybody should take components of my diet, components of what I feed my dog, and make your dog's diet even better. So with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. I'll see you next time, and until then, remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables and feed plenty of them to your dog. They're the best food on the planet.